Hello everyone and welcome to Programming in Access 2013, the advanced course. My name is Steve Bishop and in today's video we're going to be talking about connecting form objects directly to SQL Server. By form objects I mean the forms themselves or things like combo boxes and list boxes which have a row source or record source property. So in our last few videos we had a subform that was being filtered based upon the user selection of a combo box. We're going to use the same example to, in this video, but we're going to do things a little bit differently. In those videos, we were setting the row source and record source properties equal to a SQL query, but that SQL query relied upon linked tables or stored queries in the actual access database. What we're going to do this time instead is we're going to actually request the data from the SQL Server directly and then output those results on the form. Now the reason you want to do this is twofold. Number one, it tends to be a little bit faster to ask the SQL Server directly for the data that you need so that you're not using the Access Database Engine to do any sort of interpretation for you of the results or of the query. And the second reason you want to do this, which might actually be more important to you, is that it actually adds a little bit of security to your front end. If you're not using the linked tables or stored queries, then there's nothing for your users to go in and mess up. If you have a linked table, user, if they find a way to get to that linked table, can just open it up and start messing around with the data. And that's a very bad thing. So by using the VBA code behind the form, and using VBA to just directly connect to the SQL Server to get the results, you don't allow the user any way of going and messing with that data. The other thing that you can do because of uh, using VBA code only and not having those linked tables is that you can save the file as an ACCDE file, which in fact will, uh, will compile the, the code and store it as an executable and that means the user can't even view the VBA code. So they won't have any access to the tables, they won't have any access to the code, and they essentially won't even know how you're accessing the data to begin with. Okay, so now that all of that's out of the way, let's see how this is actually done. I've got my access database here open with the form active orders, which is the form that we've been working on. And I'm just gonna go to the on load event here and I'm going to go ahead and go to the code and I'm just going to copy this code block and since this code block is identical to the after update event on the combo box we might as well just combine these two events into one uh, subroutine so I'm going to create a private sub and call it fill sub form this is probably something I should have done in the other two videos, but it didn't strike me, so I'm going to do it now. And then we're going to, of course, need to reference that new subroutine. Oops. Cop. All right, there we go. Fill subform. Okay. So now both of these events are going to call this subroutine that's this uh, fill sub form subroutine. Okay, so let's actually look at the code block itself and figure out what we need to do. Well, when we're gonna request data directly from the SQL Server, if you recall when we were talking about the DAO and ADO uh, class libraries, what we needed to do in order to establish a connection to the database is we needed to dim some sort of object to contain the connection to the database. So I'm gonna dim db as a DAO database. So I'm just going to use the DAO class library for this example. I'm also going to dim RS as a DAO record set. And now let's go ahead and establish the connection to our SQL Server. And the way you do that is you set the database objects, that's going to be DB equal to, and now we're going to use the open database method to go and establish our connection to our SQL Server. Now the name as string, since we're not going to use a stored DSN, you could use a DSN if you wanted to, but I don't really like the idea of having to go to all the different computers and storing the connection strings on the computers. So I'm just going to leave this blank and I'm not going to use a DSN. Then for options, I'm going to leave everything as false and for read only, I'm also going to leave as false. Now for the connection string, 
I'm going to put that in quotation marks here. I'm going to go to the connectionstrings.com website, which hopefully you re remember from the uh, from the other videos. And I'm going to navigate to the SQL Server Native Client 11.0 ODBC driver connection strings. And I'm going to scroll down here to the trusted connection string and copy this. So we're just going to use the Windows login information to connect to our SQL database. Let's go ahead and paste that in as our connection string and fix it up a little bit here. So server is going to be localhost for me. Of course, you're going to want to put in the name of the server that's hosting your SQL server. And don't forget, this may also need to be a SQL instance. So this may need to be SQL Express if you're running SQL Express. So it would be like localhost backslash SQL Express. But for me, it's just the server name. I don't need to give an instance. The database is called Northwind. And I'm going to leave my SQL string alone for right now, but we will be coming back to it here in a bit. And I'm going to comment out this section here that was setting our record source uh, to that SQL string and then requiring it. I'm just going to comment this out because we're going to do things a little bit differently. The next thing that we need to do after we set the SQL string is we need to fill in our record set with the data that we want to come back from our uh, our Northwind SQL Server database. So we're going to do set RS equal to, and I'm going to use the DB database that's been that's already been opened, and I'm going to use the open record set method, and we're going to pass in that SQL query that goes out and retrieves the data for us. Then the variables that I or the uh, the constants that I need to pass in here are DB open Dyna set and DBC changes. And I'm just going to leave it at that. So that's going to fill in our record set object here, our RS record set. So just again, just to kind of go back over here, we're, we're uh, opening up our database connection to the SQL server and setting that on our DB object. Then we're creating our SQL query of the data that we need to fill in our record set. And then here we're actually filling in our record set. So we're referencing the DB object, opening, a, up a, opening up a record set object using the query that we built to fill in the record set. Now, the way that you get this record set to fill in the data for your form is you actually need to set a property of the form or of your combo box or of your list box, okay? So we're gonna need to drill down to that property and again, we're starting from this FRM active orders. We're starting from the parent form. So we need to start uh, and, and start from there and drill down. So we're going to use the keyword of set because we're actually setting a property which is expecting an object. Okay, This RS is an object, and whenever you're setting uh, uh, the value of an object as an object, you need to make sure you're using the set command. So we're going to set me dot sub active orders because again we're drilling down through that sub form object to the form itself and on the form there is a property called record set and it is exactly what you would think it would be it is a DAO record set property and now we just assign that record set property the object of our record set that contains the data and that's it now we have assigned the values of this record set to the record set property of the form that we want that is our sub form okay so let's go ahead and save that and compile it and I am going to get an error here but I just want you to, to understand there's nothing wrong in the way that I've done this so the error we're about to see is this is something else entirely but this is the normal flow that you would need to follow in order to open up your database connection, create your query that's going to go retrieve the data, then fill in your record set with that query, uh, with the data from that query, and then uh, assign the record set object to the record set property of the form or of the uh, comp box or list box. Okay, so all that's in place. Compile it. We're good to go. Let me close this out, and I'm going to show you that there is currently an error. You can see the Microsoft Access Database Engine cannot find the input table or query 
order price totals. Make sure it exists and that its name is spelled correctly. So order price totals does not exist according to the Access Database Engine. So what's going on here? Well, the order price totals that you see here as part of the query is actually a stored query here in the Access Database. It is not a table that exists anywhere inside of the Northwind database. There is no table called that. It is a stored query of your Access database. And because we are referencing directly to the SQL server and not the Access database for our, our data tables, that means that this query isn't found. It doesn't exist anywhere on the SQL server. And if you do some hunting around, you'll discover that it's really kind of irrelevant. This order price totals, it's giving out the price total. Okay, it's doing a, a uh, some a, a, an aggregate in a, another f query that's being referenced, um, and it's giving us this price total. But as it turns out, if you look at the form at the subform, there is no price totals coming out here. So really, it's kind of unnecessary. It's it's a field that's being returned for no particular reason. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove this. Let's take that out. And I also need to get rid of this uh, inner join here on the order price totals query. So we're just going to inner join our customers and our orders. And now I need to hunt down that on statement. There it is. There's the on statement that uh, combined our orders table with our orders price totals query. I don't need that anymore, so I'm just going to delete that. And now the only thing that's left is our references to our orders table and our customers table. So you can just look through here. Orders, 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 customers, orders. From customers, orders, customers, orders, where orders, orders, and orders. So you probably got tired of hearing me say orders there, but you get the point. There's no more reference to that subquery anymore. So our query has now been fixed to use only the tables that exist on our SQL query, and we should be good to go. Let's go ahead and save that and compile it. And now let's take a look and see what we get as a result. So let's quickly go back from design view to the regular view and Lo and behold, we have no results because we don't have any employees selected. But if I click on the drop down and select Nancy, we see all of the active orders for Nancy. We get the same thing if we select Andrew here and just see his two results. So there you go. This is no longer using any of the uh, of the stored queries or of the link tables as we proved when there was an error when we tried to use the original query, okay? Because that original query does not exist on the SQL server, and that's a good indication that there is no reference whatsoever to anything data-wise on the actual access database, okay? It's been eliminated, so I could delete the customers table and orders table if it wasn't being referenced somewhere else. I don't need these linked tables now that I have it being used uh, now that I have this SQL query that's going out to the SQL server directly to go get for that get that data. So there you go. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it's been informative to you. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to drop me a line in the comments section below this video. And as always, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Thank you so much.